Hello everybody, welcome to Austin Rossi Bucket. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and drop a like on this video. I'm trying to hit 100k subscribers on this channel by the end of the year, so your subscription would be much appreciated. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second, it makes a massive difference. So I missed yesterday's upload because I was very tired, as I mentioned at the end of the most recent upload on this channel. I was doing a lot of stuff around the house and I wanted to give myself a break, so that's why I did that. But in today's video, I will talk about both of the Chicago Bulls games, as well as the final five minutes of the fourth quarter of the Heat Pacers game as well as overtime. I decided to tune into that game as it was relatively close and also very clearly a defensive affair because both teams had like 80 something points when I tuned into the game. Um, the one upside for the Miami Heat of this game, even though they did end up losing, is that of the 91 points that they scored, Tyler Hero scored 30 of them. So a third of the team's points by, you know, off of by 0.33, that's quick math for you. Uh, he was easily their best player, and even, you know, in the late moments of the game, they were deferring to him rather than Jimmy Butler because he had the hot hand, and Jimmy Butler very much did not. Uh, like I said, I only watched the last five minutes of this game, so I can't really comment on what happened before, but just looking at the box score, you can tell, especially on Indiana's side with uh, Chris, I think it's Chris, right? I don't know anything about rookies, so I'm just confirming. Yes, it's Chris Duarte, who previous to this game was averaging 20 points per game off of two games, I believe. I know he had a, he's, he's been really good as a rookie, even though he's older, so everyone's making jokes about that on Twitter. But he in this game, uh, well, he actually had 19 points, but 6 for 21 from the field, which is not a good shooting percentage, and Malcolm Brogdon, 5 for 19. So both of those guys did not have a fun night, and that was... um. Not great. Miles Turner, who had 40 points the other day, uh, he didn't shoot well. And being that he played 16 minutes, I got to assume he got hurt or fouled out. He had five personal fouls, so maybe that would be why uh, he didn't play much. But uh, other than that, O'Shea Brissett played well off of the bench. He got fouled on a three-pointer, which was really stupid late in this game. And Miami actually fouled uh, them on two different three-pointers. They fouled O'Shea Brissett. And I believe they fouled Duarte. I believe it was Duncan Robinson who fouled Duarte. And it was Bam Adebayo who fouled uh, Brissett. Um, and two very stupid mistakes. And I believe the Brissett foul was in the third quarter. So if Bam just simply didn't foul him on that play, they would have won the game. Um, but instead, they, they he did. And Brissett hit the free throws. Um as mentioned, Tyler Hero, really clutch in this one. He hit a mid-range shot right as I was getting into the game. He hit a really huge uh, step back three, and he hit a catch and shoot from Jimmy Butler. And I think he made an I think he made one shot in overtime, if I'm not mistaken, but I can't remember what it was. But uh, he he was the reason why they were in this game, and he was the reason why they even got into overtime in the first place because he was hitting some big shots. And it, but in overtime. The Heat did fucking nothing. I don't even know. Let me let me check. Did they even – how much did they score? They scored five points in overtime to Indiana's 16. It's not going to work if you do that, especially in its five minutes of basketball. You give up 16 points, being that this was such a defensive affair, and they held them to an eight-point third quarter apparently. Uh, yeah, if you do that, you're not going to have good results. So uh, great show from Tyler Hero who really, really uh, – carried Miami's offense and that showed through the box score and that it also showed in the moments that I watched but yeah not not the end result that you would have liked from such a good game from Tyler Hero but worth mentioning Tyler had that great first game uh and then he has this game and he was killing it in the preseason so now up to 28 points per game for the regular season thus far over two games which is great obviously uh might be Tyler Hero's breakout year. I mean, that's a lot of scoring. He looked real good in the preseason. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 definitely something to look out for. But now I have to indulge in my need to talk about the Chicago Bulls. The other day, the Bulls played the New Orleans Pelicans without Zion Williamson, which is an important caveat. But uh, I have to talk about that game. I have less to say about it because it happened yesterday, and I'm really bad at remembering specifics. Um, but the Bulls were up by 20 points at one point in that game with Zach Levine having scored nothing. Zero points, nada. And this was in early second quarter where I made note of that. Uh, and then preceding that, 
the Pelicans started to go on a bit of a run, and then Zach Levine scored 20 points in six minutes in the second quarter. So right as I made the comment, I tweeted about it. I was like, hey, look at this. The Bulls are up 20 without Zach Levine scoring the ball. When's the last fucking time that's happened? Uh, and the last time that's happened is when the Bulls didn't have Zach Levine, period. But um, that might not actually be true, but I'm pretty confident that it's close to true at the very least. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, Zach Levine comes into the game, and then despite the fact that uh, he wasn't doing anything in the first quarter, he ends up finishing this game with 32 points on 58% from the field. And previous to this Pistons game, that meant that Zach Levine was averaging 33 points per game on 60 or 78% true shooting. Uh, this Pistons game that we ju he just played, he shot the ball very poorly, but... Otherwise, uh, that's what he did do in the first two games. Um, outside of that, Nikola Vucevic continued to struggle as he did in the Pistons game, and then he did in this other Pistons game. So I'm really starting to get concerned about Vucevic. But DeMar DeRozan had himself himself a game. Lonzo Ball had a triple-double. Alex Caruso got a lot of really cool highlight plays. Javante Green was electric. And Javante is quickly becoming my favorite player on the team. Apparently... His nickname is Wu from the Bulls players gave him this nickname because he's such a fucking energy guy and he's always screaming and shit. I love that. And it pretty much personifies exactly what Javante Green brings to the table. Uh, and he's been so good defensively. He makes so many defensive plays. Like it's not just like being right place, right time. He makes plays on the defensive end constantly blocks and steals and all that two blocks and a steal in this game. And if I can check the, Pistons game of today I would imagine he from a from a number standpoint also uh actually he had neither so fuck me I guess <laughs> uh there was a, a bit of a block party from our guards though because Lonzo had two blocks Zach did not have a block this time no yeah no he didn't uh and DeRozan had wait Lonzo had four blocks I'm looking at the wrong thing yeah Lonzo was fucking block city today he had four blocks DeRozan had two and Alex Caruso had one and Ayo DeSumo had one those two blocks being in the same possession that uh no one of them was Lonzo and Ayo okay I'm 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 scrambling trying to focus on what happened in two different fucking games here but uh, the Bulls' offense flowed perfectly. They ended the game with Lonzo getting his triple-double with zero turnovers with a lob to Alex Caruso, and that pretty much that, that play sealed it there. Uh, well, it was already over, but that was like the cherry on top. Uh, just a fantastic game played by them. Patrick Williams' defense was a little bit suspect, and that was something that concerned me a little bit. But other than that, nothing much of note. On the Pelicans' end of things, Devontae Graham had himself a game. Ingram had himself a game. Uh, Valanchunas was all right. And Nikhil Alexander-Walker was all right. Really, they got a pretty good contribution from just about everybody who played outside of, like, Garrett Temple shot one for four, but whatever. But ultimately... Uh, there was no, there, 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 they just didn't have enough. The Bulls offense was so good. And even though the Bulls defense was good in this game, not outlandishly good, uh, they, they scored 128 points. And if you're not going to do that, then is what it is. But in today's game, Bulls offense really struggled. Lonzo shot 42% from the field, which is not abnormal for him. Uh, especially with his volume of three-pointers. But DeRozan shot 39%. Vucevic shot 37%. Zach Levine shot 33%. Um, but it did not matter. Uh, because DeRozan did have a stretch where he was scoring all of his shots at the end of the first quarter going into the second, where that was a big offensive moment for him. Vucevic rebounded the ball like hell. But the defense in this one was so, 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 so good. Now, once again, I have to add... It's the Pistons, so I'm not going to read into it too much. I don't think the Bulls are going to be one of the top five defenses in the league, but I think there's a world where they crack into the top ten based on what I've seen in these first couple of games. Now, uh, they play the Toronto Raptors on, um, on two days from now, which is Monday. Uh, I'm going to a Celtics Hornets game in real life because the Hornets are three hours from me, uh, so I won't be watching that game. But then they play the Knicks. The Knicks, I think, are going to be the first real test because the Knicks are a pretty solid offensive team. Uh, I know their offense last year was not great, but their added guard play, I think, is another point of a pretty good offense. Um, on top of the fact that Julius Randle hasn't seemed to skip a beat thus far. But uh, I'm, 
I, I I get we haven't played good teams, but defensively, I've the team's energy is really there, and it really feels like defense is emphasized. Again, I realize the competition has not been there, but what I'm seeing on the floor indicates that the coaching staff has clearly indicated that defense is a big point of emphasis and playmaking as well. The one thing that I want to say in Zach Levine's favor in this game, even though he only had 14 points and he shot 6 for 18 from the field, Five assists, and of those five assists, all of them felt impactful, and the Pistons game as well. He had two fantastic passes, one to Caruso on the break where he threaded the needle, and one cross-court pass to Troy Brown hit a three on a late closeout from Valanchunas. Uh, not only that, but Zach has been so good as a defender and a passer. It really seems like Zach has fully gone into the more winning elements of his all-around game because the pieces around him allow him to not have to put so much emphasis on his scoring. And like, I get that it's a point of criticism to don't, you, you can't just dismiss like, hey, this guy doesn't have an all-around game because he has to score so much. I think that's not really a great excuse. And especially when we're talking about superstar caliber players at a certain point, if you're expected to be this level of guy, play some fucking defense. But nevertheless, the fact that Zach has teammates around him that are really competent and really capable of carrying an offense without him even on the floor, as I mentioned earlier with the Pelicans game, the Bulls were up 20 without Zach having scored the ball. If he has that kind of stuff around him, he can focus more on the other aspects of the game that he previously really was not able to put a lot of stuff into. And that's really shown in how he's played defense, how he has been passing the ball his assist numbers are pretty much the same they're 4.5 assists over three games per game um but I, even if that's the case i'm telling you it's it just feels different the passing just feels different from zach it feels like he's not really shooting the ball that much which he he, he kind of is but he also isn't like it's not like he's really looking for his shot every time he has the ball because he doesn't need to because there's so many other options on the floor uh, that said bulls struggled on offense in this pistons game it was the defense that won him this uh it, it, it should have been a bigger win uh, the Pistons had scored only 58 points through the first three quarters, which is insanity. Uh, and then in the fourth quarter, I'm pretty sure, yes, the Pistons outscored the Bulls 28 to 18. Uh, Trey Lyles got in the game and hit three three pointers in a row. Uh, and then weirdly, the Pistons subbed him out right as he gave them a spark of life. But yeah, uh, ultimately, Bulls still won, just made it a little bit of like, this game should be put away by now, and it's not, but ultimately, the Bulls still won, so not too much to complain about. But yeah, I have liked what I've seen from the Bulls thus far. Granted, I have not seen them against a good NBA team yet. I think the from what I've heard about the Raptors, I have not watched a Raptors game yet, though I did see them a couple, like probably two games in the preseason. Um, their defense is pretty good, but their offense has iffy moments uh like i said this is just some stuff that i've heard and i haven't actually put my eyes on the screen to watch the raptors but uh yeah that's that's i think the knicks will be the true test and then after that the schedule for the bulls after the knicks game gets real fucking rough uh my dad sent me this this morning so let me let me find it in our text uh it is for weirdly he sent me the list of the games through seat geek screenshots just like why would that be how you send me things but he's a dad so i guess it makes sense but uh new york knicks then the jazz then the bull or then the piston or then jesus christ then the celtics then the sixers then the sixers then the nets then the mavericks then the warriors so yeah a uh, long stretch of not fun basketball and i believe lakers and clippers don't fall too far behind that so a lot of uh, a lot of good NBA teams that they have to face in a row. So that will be the true test of this team. But really liking what I am seeing thus far. Uh, I'm sorry that the title was about the Heat, even though I only talked about that game for five minutes of a 14 minute video. But I talk about the Bulls a lot, so I have to disguise it. What are you gonna do? Anyways, uh, that is it. Goodbye.